Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For those who are new, my name is Linda and I'm a product designer from Toronto. So for today's video, I'll be doing an in-depth walkthrough of all my case studies on my portfolio. Um, and before we get started, if I have a weird lisp going on, it's because I have Invisalign and I got it recently. So I'm just going to get used to talking with them on, so don't mind that. But anyways, let's get right into the video. To give you guys some context before I dive in, this particular project I did was during my internship in 2019 at a company called UpHub in Toronto. And since this was near the end of my internship, I was given the opportunity to lead the project on my own, which was awesome. So I got to experience having some autonomy, but still having support from my senior designer and input from the other design intern. Um, if you guys are interested in reading through this case study I showed today, it's up on my portfolio here under onboarding MVP. But because I'm essentially presenting it to you guys, I'll be going through it in a slide deck. That being said, just one little tip here. When you guys are on a technical interview where you're going through your work, your case studies, please never present it off of your portfolio website. The reason why this is a big no-no is because it doesn't look professional or put together, so just don't do it. Um, and before I get into this case study, I just want to mention that there are a lot of improvements I would make to this presentation, which I will talk about at the very end of the video, so stay tuned for that. Okay, so now let's get into the case study. So I present my project as an onboarding MVP and give some context around the product. So UpHabit is a personal CRM application that allows users to build and maintain important relationships. And then I go into the overview. The purpose of this is to give more context behind what the project is, and this will kind of lead up to the problem that I'm trying to solve. So UpHabit, again, is a personal CRM application that allows users to build, maintain important relationships. A user will do so by setting reminders, adding notes, and creating tags to their relationships. In order to use UpHabit to its fullest potential, it's crucial that users are constantly creating reminders, notes, and tags to build the relationships. This ultimately creates daily habits for the user, which leads them to wanting and depending on the app more. So again, give some more context to the project, and I kind of state my real responsibilities on the right, just to let the reader or whoever I'm presenting to what exactly my role was and responsibilities within like the design process. And of course, just showing the timeline is also very important too, so they know how long it took you to finish this project. So now that we gave more context to the project, now we can kind of go into the problem that we're actually solving. So essentially, we are seeing an increase in drop-off after users sign up on the app, and this ultimately led to decrease in subscriptions and signups. And you know, since users were not following up on the reminders that they set, we assumed that we just had to take a quick UI update to help users follow the reminders. As this was our initial solution, after connecting research, there was a bigger problem that came up. So it was apparent from our research that the reason why users were not following up on the reminders was because they didn't know how to use the app as a whole. And since I was on a time constraint of a month, and it was two weeks at this point, uh, because of user research, I had to quickly pivot another direction and create an MVP. Now that we know the problem, I went straight into um, showing the solution. And the reason why I did this earlier in my case study is because to give more of a high level overview of the project, uh, at the very beginning and then go in depth into my actual design thinking and process of the research itself. So the solution to this was Clippy, a helper dismissal card to guide users throughout the app from start to finish. So prompting users to take the next action helped and reminded them to keep maintaining the relationships. Now we know the solution to the problem, I want to kind of go in depth into the actual research that we did to get to the solution. So we started off with user flows. Um, before the usability test and that's because we want to know what the ideal user flow would be for this user um, and that way if any pain points came up during the usability test it'd be easier to see where in that flow uh, went wrong and kind of go back to that and fix those pain points. So once this was set, we went into creating our usability test. Of course, we didn't go straight into testing users without a good prompt. Um, we did that with a detailed documentation where we determined the five W's. So as you can see on the right, there's um, questions for who, what, when, where, and how. This helped us create a better prompt that really focused on the problem we were trying to solve. After that, um, once this was approved, by our senior product designer, we recruited five users from like our WeWork office to conduct the usability test. And as you can see, 
instead of going straight into the task itself, it can be, you know, very overwhelming for someone you don't know and where you're like testing them. We kind of warm them up with pre-session questions and then go into the task and then finish it off with post-session questions. So it seems more like all around put together and just a lot more comfortable for the user to go through. After going through those questions, now we're reflecting on the responses we got from the actual uh, test. And this is when we realized that there was a bigger problem at stake. And that was that there was a big learning curve to the app and users did not understand how to actually use it. So this is when we had to make a pivot to the project and focus on creating a solution that would solve this particular problem. So as you can see in the responses, there are a lot of responses like, what is the difference between this and this? I don't understand this, I'm confused. All the responses that like come up as pain points. So now that we know we had to basically solve for a new problem, a bigger problem I would say, um, we kind of had to think around what the solution might be and kind of a rationale within the short time frame that we had. So again, since we need to create a solution um, for our users as soon as possible, we decided to create an MVP, which is a minimal viable product. Um, and we had to also avoid long development time. And that's kind of where we came up with the solution uh, called Clippy. And Clippy is uh, Microsoft Office, that little like, assistant tool uh, back in the day, and we took inspiration from that. So we created a dismissible helper card that would be triggered depending on specific actions the user took in the app. So this would um, constantly prompt users to take their next action and hopefully lead them to creating habits within the app and help them learn how to, how to use the app itself. So just more like guide tips, I would say. Once we kind of rationalized the solution that we created, we went into the final design. So again, like I said, this Clippy will be triggered depending on specific actions users take within the app. There are two examples that I wanted to show um, for people to just better understand how this would work. And the first example is as a new user enters the app and syncs their contacts, a Clippy is triggered. Next example is the following up. And this is where after a user sets a reminder, like we saw earlier, uh, Clippy is triggered to give tips on how to follow up with this contact. So the first part of this product is to make those reminders, notes, and tags. But the second part is actually following up and like maintaining those relationships. So this Clippy is triggered to give tips on how to do so. And that way they know how to use the app as a whole from start to finish. Because we didn't have time to test it before implementing it, we tested it after um, and the results that there was a huge improvement to the customer engagement in the app. So as you can see, there was a 718% increase in subscriber conversion and a 42% drop in subscriber churn. And this goes back to kind of our problem, like the goals for this project. And that was to uh, increase subscriptions and signoffs and decrease the drop off rate. So I would say this project was definitely successful and has helped users actually learn more about how to use the app in general. And then I end off the case study with more of a reflection on like what I learned from this project. So the first thing was that, you know, UX projects will usually never go as planned and that is okay. Second was collaboration. And third was properly articulating design decisions. So now what can I improve to this particular case study and this presentation? So the number one thing is because I did this quite a long time ago, like a year and a half, I would say, um, I have grown so much as a designer that the quality of work could be a lot better in terms of like my design thinking and just how I go about creating the solution itself. Um, the second thing is to maybe give more context around the why uh, behind the decisions I made in like the research itself. I think that would have been a bit better. Um, another thing is the presentation itself where I could present it more like a story with transitions in between slides. So as you can see in my slide deck, um, one, I'm just like clicking through stuff and just like showing all the information at once, which sometimes can be kind of overwhelming if like you're not giving more context to it. And the last thing is I would change the way I'm showing my case study. I believe I just took it straight from the website and then plopped it into a slide deck, which isn't that great. So I would definitely change that.
But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video of this in-depth walkthrough, um, me explaining everything, the why behind my design decisions. I really enjoyed looking back at my work and just seeing how much I've grown as a designer. Like I said, if you guys enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and of course, hit the notification bell to see when I post next, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys!